And now for something completely different. On Tuesday, Nintendo President Furukawa announced that they would be making an announcement about the announcement of the successor to the Nintendo Switch within the year. And you have pointed out that this is basically the Switch 2 announcement. Additionally, specs have possibly leaked on the Switch successor that shows that it has exceptionally more memory than the original, meaning that it could even possibly play Pokemon at more than 10 frames per second. Welcome to Necro News, the show where we cover the hottest gaming news from the last week. This week we'll be covering Microsoft and Sony dropping the ball, one man's mission to nuke Phil Spencer, and so much more. So subscribe to the channel and leave a like or I'll make you into a flesh golem. No seriously, do it. Wait a second guys, where are your models? Booster and I wanted to try something new this week, so if you enjoy the new style, let us know. So cool! Good job, democracy. Democracy isn't dead. Nah, it didn't. I mean, it was a small drop in the bucket, but... Well, I cut Ellie off last week, so let's just rewind the tape. Hey there. While we were recording, more information came out. Not only has the game been removed in 177 countries, including Puerto Rico, the Philippines, and unknown country code XD, yeah, that didn't go away. In fact, Sony has doubled down and added Estonia, Lithuania, and Latvia to the I Can't Buy Helldivers 2 list. Though a small silver lining is that anyone who bought the game pre-region log are still able to play, which begs the question, why even region log the game anyway? I bet the PSN requirement is coming back someday, somehow. And that's a bet I'm happy to make, because the PC release of Ghost of Tsushima is also banned in these very same countries, which is kind of incredibly suspicious. And while we didn't touch on this last week, because a lot of things had happened so fast, Sony was caught actively changing their TOS from where it stated that all PC games had PSN sign in as optional, to now where some games will require it. Because, you know, companies can just change their TOS, I guess. Anything for the shareholders. That's what this was for, you know. The shareholders. I mean, this was their most successful game in years, and, and how bad the, the PS5 is doing. They wanted to boost their numbers and be like, hey, hey guys, we, we had great numbers. Invest, please. That's all that this was for. They never planned on doing this. Just look here. They translated it into Chinese and Russian, countries that are historically PSN limited. An important distinction to the story is that Arrowhead, the developers of Helldivers, are not the ones to blame for the region locking. This is purely on Sony. Anyway, that's everything with Sony so far. Whether you love Helldivers or not, it doesn't look like Democracy has one just yet. What do you guys think though? Will Sony bend the knee again? Let us know in the comments. Normally a gacha game squeezing the blood out of its people barely counts as news, but Good Smile Company you know, the guys that make the cool figures, have decided that they too want to be in the news. But wait, when did Good Smile Company start making games? Inspired by the highly innovative industry leaders, Toho Lost Word is an official. Wait a minute, Lost Word? I thought it was Lost World. I think you're thinking of Jurassic Park. Oh yeah, no, you're right. Anyway, it's an official Toho Gacha fan game and it's celebrating its third anniversary the usual way for a gacha game with the release of new limited time PNGs that are otherwise easily downloadable on the internet for free. This is mine now. <laughs> the version L0G, whatever that means, of Sanae Kochiya, wearing what looks like a wedding dress, has been added to the game on May 10th and is available both in gacha lottery and as a separate purchase with no gambling at all. The catch is that the guaranteed way to get your slug waifu is to make five separate purchases worth $80, $65, $60, $50, and $46. That's right, 46. And if you did the math right, that means that adds up to $300. For reference, with this money you can buy the standard edition of Escape from Tarkov, purchase the unheard edition on top of it, and you'll still have money left over. However, this Sanae... Sanae. Thanks. Is also available on a different premium gacha that costs $16 per use. Is this really news? Not really, it's just normal for gacha games. Correct, which is why I laugh at gacha players. Why are you guys paying for things you can get easily for free? And if you think Sony fucked up, wait until you hear about Microsoft. I mean, the Xbox hasn't been good since the... TV, 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 sports TV, TV, TV. Anybody? Era started with the Xbox One. As in the original Xbox or the Xbox One? N no, like, yes, the, the Xbox One, not the original Xbox. Ah, okay. Oh my god! TV! 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 Idiots! 
Well, fun fact, the Xbox One is 10 years old, and the 360 is considered retro now. Anyway, Microsoft forgot that they were supposed to be a gaming company that released games. And they closed a whole bunch of game studios last week. What's different about this situation compared to the many closures that have happened earlier this year is that the studios that got yeeted were actually talented and had some pretty decent games. Right, let's get into it. Here are all the studios that have been yiggity yeeted. Alpha Dog Studio, they made a Doom mobile game. Then there was Roundhouse Games, who was an Elder Scroll Online devs that was once a studio named Human Head that was absorbed into the... Yes? That's Human Head! Like the devs of the Prey game from 2006. So you're telling me they were taken into Zedimax and forced to be working on that shitty MMO? So Bethesda stole Prey 2 from us, and then forced the devs to work on their freaking online game. Continuing, there is also Arkane Austin which made Redfall, a game that has a whole side to this that we'll get into in a minute. And, you know, Prey. The most depressing closure of all this, however, is the developer of the Evil Within series, Hi-Fi Rush and Ghostwire Tokyo, Tango Gameworks. All four of these games were successful in their own right with Hi-Fi Rush winning multiple awards. Which is kind of weird since Matt Booty, head of Xbox, said the very next day, we need smaller games that give us prestige and awards. You know, like Hi-Fi Rush. Both Tango and Arcane were in the process of pitching new games too. There's going to be a Hi-Fi Rush sequel for Tango, and for Arcane, a return to games like Prey or Dishonored. Arcane also had plans to try to fix their shitty game, Redfall, but as they've closed down, their proposed roadmap, as well as their promised DLC, has also been cancelled. People who bought the DLC or special edition of Redfall will be getting what Microsoft is calling a make good offer as compensation for not getting their paid content. There's no details as to what these offers are, but it probably won't be a refund of the money people spent. It'll probably be some in-game item or something equally as useless. And the final piece of bad news in regards to this whole story is if you want Hi-Fi Rush, get it now. Because according to a Humble Bundle listing, Hi-Fi Rush will become delisted from Steam on June 3rd, 2025, and any keys unredeemed by that time will be useless. That's not really that surprising as the game does feature licensed music, but it still sucks. But don't let the bad news get you down too much, because despite how frustrating AAA studios can be, remember there's always AA studios. Things will change. And in fact, last week also saw the completion of One Man's Dream in Fallout 76, a dream I'm sure a few game devs probably now share, as Phil Spencer's camp was nude by another player in the game. This was the final boss quest for the vault dweller Real 1090 Jake, who made it his mission to give the Xbox boss the nuclear suppository he needed. You may be surprised, like we were, to learn that Phil Spencer actually plays games sometimes. His character, Fallout Boy 76, was level 49. His name was Fallout Boy 76? Are you kidding me? Of course, the studio closures happening at the same time certainly gives Jake's quest some heavy meme potential, but he said he wasn't trying to make a statement. In an interview with Kotaku, he said the following He was the final boss in my eyes. In an RPG, I prefer to be the bad guy. I joked about attacking him because he hurt our feelings, but it's been my mission weeks before. I have no beef with Phil. Phil's cool. No, he's not. And that's that. See, I told you things would be better. And let's end this week's episode with some more good news. In episode 86, we discussed how Warner Brothers Studios had decided to unlist all Adult Swim games, including favorites like Duck Game, Samurai Jack, and some others. Well, on Thursday morning, Owen Jerry, creator of the game Small Radio's Big Televisions, tweeted out that ownership and store listings for his game will be returning to him. Later that same day, one of the developers of Duck Game, Landon, also tweeted that he got an email confirming the same thing. So, good job, WB. You, you didn't fuck it up. It's unclear if this will continue to extend to all games in the Adult Swim catalog, and I kind of question whether WB would be smart or selfless enough to actually pull a move like that. So, if there are people who actually want to see the true canon ending of Samurai Jack, and not the one shown on the cartoon, I suggest picking up the Samurai Jack game before it's delisted completely. This week's Spare the Life Banger, a segment where we cover a game that our community doesn't think has had enough attention, is called Home Safety Hotline. This game is not talked about as much as it should be, and I honestly didn't even realize it was buried alive. If you guys like analog horror, like Smile, Gemini Home Entertainment, The Monument Mythos, you'll love this game. 
You work for a company kind of like SCP, but instead of being a secret organization that captures and houses creatures, you answer phones and have to send care packages to people to deal with their pests. You should absolutely play it. It's a lot of fun. Here are the games coming out this week. Wow. And here's this week's schedule. We'll actually be playing Home Safety Hotline if you're interested, and we'll be playing more Alien Isolation. And that's it for this week's Nicker News. If you like what we do here and want to keep up to date, subscribe to the channel. If you've stuck with us this far, thank you so much for everything you do, and a very special thank you to our channel members. If you like our content and want to support us even more, consider joining. And that's it for this week, so until next time, goodbye. goodbye. Either get the physical version or download it on Steam and never remove it because according to Humble Bundle Because according to a Humble Bundle Because according to a Humble Bundle Humble Bundle Because according to a Humble Bundle list Humble bu Humble Bundle hum, hum, Humble Humble Bundle listing